Hey everybody, it's Bill from KT.com and we're down in the Weather Center with a very, very busy Rhonda on a very, very stormy Tuesday. Yes. Ugh. What is going on? Nasty. Yes. I mean, everybody I've heard from on Facebook and Twitter is like, really? Well, we told you it was coming. Uh, what you're going to be seeing for the rest of the day is this, wind and rain. In fact, I was just looking at this computer model trying to figure out if the winds would relax within the next uh, 12 hours and you see how tightly uh, close together the lines are here yes, showing yeah. uh, lines of equal pressure and usually showing when the winds are really strong the lines are tightly packed together that way this is 1 a.m. tomorrow oh, so dear. here's the thing I think we see these strong winds on the coast in the valley through the day some of these gusts higher 70 miles per hour or so along the coast we've already had a 97 mile per hour gust at the top of the coast range in Mount Hebo Wow so these peak wind gusts uh, will actually continue I think throughout the day at around 60 70 on the coast and for us 40. Um, as far as rainfall, computer models did back off on that from last night and the night before. They were saying two to three inches for us. It's looking more like an inch to an inch and a half, but steady rain for the rest of the day. We're also looking for the possibility of some embedded thunderstorms and some of this moisture coming through. I've already seen it this morning around Lincoln City, so don't be surprised if you hear thunder, see lightning, especially if you're watching us from the central coast. Here's Storm Tracker Doppler radar. Look at that thing. Wow. What a mess. It's a lot of moisture, but uh, most of it is focused over southwest Washington. So there is a flood watch for the Willapa Hills, where there's a little bit more snowpack in that part of the coast range and the north coast because at high tide some of those rivers are going to come up pretty high. I just don't think there'll be a widespread flooding issue this time around. Part of the reason is we already started out with lower rivers when this whole thing got started this morning. So. We hear a lot about uh, the effects of La Nina. Uh, what is it and what's, what does it do to the weather? Well, we're into another La Nina year and usually uh, La Nina means colder waters along the Pacific, uh, just west of South America. When those waters are colder, it redirects the storm track to the northwest. So we usually see more rain than normal. Just like last winter, it's going to look like that this winter as well. Not as much snowfall uh, down on the ground, but La Nina usually brings a lot of snow to the Cascades, so it looks like another great ski season uh, if all this La Nina talk works out, but it is looking like a strong La Nina season uh, he heading our way. I have to say, though, a lot of the computer models and a lot of the climatologists projected a weak La Nina. So um, just because it's raining cats and dogs today doesn't mean it's going to do that for the rest of the season. It just will be wetter well, than normal. I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take the good skiing, though. <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right, Rhonda, we'll check in later for another update.